Good afternoon. I'm here with my guest, um, Re Anen Pershinsky. Um, and um, she is uh, a young writer, author, in the Young Writer Author Series at Endicott College in uh, Beverly, Massachusetts. Uh, I was, was a pleasure to have her previously in my advanced poetry workshop. And now she's joined a program that was started by Dan Sklar, Professor Dan Sklar and myself back in 2003, is now, uh, not 2013, it's now directed by uh, Emily um, Penna. Um, and um, it, uh, we published uh, two books, uh, chapbooks uh, in the, you know, a semester for the last uh, eight years. And um, we've also, um, We've also had readings and things affiliated with that. So it's glad that um, you are among the group um, that uh, were selected. Uh, we try to uh, get our, the best talent we have at Endicott College uh, in the series. Um, so welcome aboard. Um, Thank you very much. And um, so I'll first ask you, um, do you have a working title yet for your for your book? Yes, my working title right now is From the Dirt, but I'm not super attached to that, so it might change at some point, but it might not. And the process for you choosing a title? <laughs> yeah, it's really random. I don't have a good like step-by-step -step thing to to name my writings. It's kind of just whatever hits me in the moment. But it's it's thematic, right? Yeah, I try to make it at least somewhat thematic. Now, um, you know, a lot of people come from a bookish background, um, mm -hmm. and they're inspired by that. Um, mm -hmm. I know my family, uh, they used to sell books uh, in New York City at Con County Bookstore. They own that and stuff. So I was always around books. So how about you? Um, not really so much in my family. Both of my parents are cooks, so they're not really in a bookish background. Nobody really in my extended family is super bookish either. Um, but I don't know. I've always been <laughs> really into reading and writing, so. Okay. It's, it's and it wasn't funny. discouraged, obviously. Oh, definitely not. My yeah. parents have always been very, like, encouraging of, of everything. <laughs> So when did you have this epiphany that you actually wanted to um, be a writer? I've always really written and created stories ever since I was young. I found like recently papers where I tried to create like a cohesive story even as young as like first, second, third grade. Mm -hmm. So I think that's always just been something that I've done. But going into college, I didn't really know what I wanted to do and picking a creative writing major. I was just like, oh, maybe I'll change it if I don't like it or if I find like have an epiphany of what I really want to do. But the epiphany was that I really wanted to be a writer. And I think subconsciously that was there all along. I just didn't know it yet. Mm -hmm. OK. Um... And and you also uh, practice uh, you you in this book you will be uh, treated to uh, um, flash fiction. Uh, can you describe that and maybe just talk about a piece that you you're planning to put in? What sure. what is the definition of for you of flash fiction? Because um, I don't think there's any standard definition really. But go ahead. Yeah, I can't really find one. I usually try to keep it like 500 words or less, mm -hmm. um, but it's just kind of like the bare bones of detail and everything and trying to get a story across with every single word counting and every detail is there for a reason. Um, one of the pieces that I worked on, I wrote and it was kind of inspired by Neil Gaiman's writing. I know he has like the click clack, yeah, yeah. but like a monster, like his short story. I don't think that's flash fiction, but um, I wrote something inspired by that about like a monster with with very long nails and it's kind of the progression of um the narrator from a nightmare into reality where the monster carries over okay um so i was going to ask you um reading your material uh that you sent me mm -hmm. um 
you deal with the uglier. You like the ugly, you said. Um, and uh, um, could you talk a bit why you choose to deal with the ugly? Sure. Um, I just really have been drawn to like the darker side of things in my writing pretty much forever. Um, I feel really vulnerable when I write about happier or lighter things, even though that's kind of the opposite of what you would expect. Um, but just the uglier side, the darker side is just what I've always been attracted to. That imagery feels really beautiful to me, even though it's it can be classified as ugly or dark. That's what yeah, I Yeah, there's a lot of conflict from. there. I mean, if you know, like I always said in class, you know, you were in my advanced poetry class. Like mm -hmm. I said, if you don't, you know, if it's all about Ma with her gingham dress and the oatmeal cookies and going down to the creek, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, you know, I mean, it's sometimes it just makes for, you know, not to say it is great positive writing, but I'm just mm -hmm. saying conflicts. Um, and you do see, uh, as we discussed in class, a, 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 a beautiful side to the ugly, don't you? Yes. Yeah, it's very like subverted, but yeah. in a very interesting and creative way that I think is like just great for writing and inspires me a lot. What would be like if I just had to throw ask you a question? What would be like a beautiful ugly image that that you? Um, I think one that like really jumps out to me is the devil, which I put a lot in my poetry that I wrote for your class, where he's kind of like the ultimate ugly. But I don't know, I find some sort of like- But even the devil who's ugly can image. be sexy, can be sexy as you pointed out. True. You know, there's mm -hmm. something about the black and the nefarious person. Um, yeah, definitely. Now, I, I know you, you're an English major, creative writing major, both or? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so you must have had influences, um, you know, people, I know you talked about one previously, uh, in, influenced your writing with Pivotal and it's just, in your writing uh, and we have a great faculty uh, so I mean maybe you want to talk about some of the people who um, inspired you. Sure um, I think definitely my advisor Elizabeth Winthrop has been like a really great inspiration to me she's helping me with my thesis right now which has been like incredible because it's so difficult <laughs> I'm writing a novel for it and that's like the hardest thing. And she's a very uh, she's very acclaimed novelist. Yes. Yeah. And her advice has been absolutely like incredible for me, like moving forward with that. And that's super helpful. <laughs> um, and then you definitely have been a really big influence in poetry, especially because before your class, I never really wrote poetry, but taking that class really opened me up to a lot of different aspects of writing and different like structures in poetry in general. Who else? And everything. So yeah. Um, you must have taken Dan Sklar. I know you've taken Yeah, him. Dan Sklar has definitely been a huge influence too. He taught the intro to creative writing class that I took freshman year first semester. And that class was really what cemented me into creative writing as a whole. Like as soon as I sat in that class and, and started writing for it, I was like, this is what I'm meant to do. This is the path that I was meant to take. And, and yeah. Did you did you work with Sam Alexander, or Charlotte Gordon, or um, um, anyone else? Professor Gordon. Yeah, I've had a bunch of classes with Professor Gordon, and I I love her. I've taken a lot of like her historical based classes, mm -hmm. but I I think that she's been a really big influence on me, definitely. And um, you know, uh, novels I find sometimes are even more. Um, um, more fodder, create more fodder for my poetry than than other poems. I mean, mm -hmm. do you find that? Yeah, I definitely read novels more than I read poetry. I don't read as much poetry as I should, but some like themes or like images from novels that I read have definitely inspired poetry as of late. <laughs> um, and and you're a um, you're a confessional. You love confessional poetry. Sylvia Plath. I do like it. Robert Lowell. Um, uh, who else are we thinking of? Uh, uh, what, Anne Sexton. And we discussed those, I know. Um, mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the confessional poetry was kind of a breakout because before that it wasn't looked on as being kosher to, you know, talk about your personal problems. And these poets certainly, you know, 
they wrote about suicide, mental illness, because they were all hospitalized. Uh, uh, you know, actually, they were all hospitalized at one time at McLean, where I work. But I was there uh, after they came. Um, but what what is it uh, about um, the confessional poet that, that you like so much? Yeah, I really like that they um, spoke about their own experiences and they didn't really carry um, a sense of shame about it for the most part and that they were very open about like their emotions, what they were going through because that's something that I really like exploring in my poetry and like it's almost giving myself permission to talk about my own experiences in terms of like literary images. And I think that that's been really eye-opening for me. Any poem by one of them that you can think of that really, really hit you? I, I can't think of one off the top of my head <laughs> at this moment, but just the movement in general, I think is very inspirational. Um, okay. Um, so I was going to ask you, uh, we expect the book to be out in late April or May or something like that, I believe. Okay, I think so. There's something around there. Yeah. No rush, no rush. We want to get it right. <laughs> um, and uh, so why don't you just read us a few poems or whatever, you, uh, you know, a couple from um, what sure. you're working on now. And by the way, you're working, I don't know if I mentioned this, you're working with Emily Pinot, who's the director mm -hmm. of the series. Um, and she's very uh, adept. And she's a graduate of Endicott College and works as a professional writer now. Okay. All right. Um, let me just pull them up. <laughs> um, so this first one is called What Happens in Hell? And yeah. Bagpipes and auto harps blister the eardrums scooping out your earwax and feeding it to you. Long nails screech across chalkboards, sound brings pain. There is no sun here. Everything is gas lamps and candles. It is cold and it's getting colder. You can either have sex with the devil or sit neck deep in the river sticks, let mermaids slap you in the face with their tails. Eat the sweet fruit from apple trees, brush golden hair in the mirror. It's not all bad, not all the time. The worst pain is surprise. Tear it out, fall to your knees, kiss the devil on the cheek, say hello to Icarus for me. Miss the sun, the bagpipes get louder, the auto harps are out of tune. What I wouldn't do for a good goddamn cup of coffee. And that's what happens in hell. <laughs> as, as far as we know, right? Uh, did yeah. you read, did, have you read Dante's uh, Inferno at all? No, I haven't. That's definitely on my list of, of uh, uh, ones uh, that I need to read. I think I would love it, but yeah, you will. It's definitely will. inspired. It's interesting. I remember I started reading it in the basement of the Harvard Square Books, uh, and it was like the radiator was on. And as I was going mm -hmm. down each layer of hell, I was sweating more and more because it was so oh, hot. Yeah. And so, so it was a very <laughs> visceral experience. Yeah, very anyway. on theme. <laughs> yeah. So how? Uh, uh, yeah, run more. We'll give us one more piece. Sure. Um, so this one I called Perfe Persephone's Promise. Buds begin to bloom on the tips of the tree branches, but even with the sun beating down on my scarred scalp, it just doesn't feel like spring. After months, I see you again when I finally stopped caring that you weren't coming back. You have a new tattoo. I haven't seen it yet. Dice, but you've never been lucky. The skin around the ink is red and painful. I want to tear it off. Here you are vulnerable, raw. I want to erase any part of you that could be art. I feel my body shrivel into the cold snow piles of winter. I felt so much safer in your absence. Winter continues to rear its ugly head. And though your blizzards still tear me down, though I'm not yet strong enough without you, though the dice have yet to roll in my favor, spring is coming. It's coming fast. Lovely. Uh, well, I, I really want to thank you for taking the time to join us here. Um, thank you for Poet to me. poet, writer to writer, and um, hope to see you soon. I'm not on campus, but I hope to be at one point. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let me, so uh, take care. And I'm going to. Awesome. Thank you so much.